आत्म नमस्कार दिस इज शानू आई एम सेवनंद योगा टीचर एंड अ हेल्थ केयर प्रोफेशनल टुडे लेट्स डू वर्कआउट फॉर अ ब्रेन लेट्स फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाई वी नीड टू डू इट हाउ टू डू इट एंड देन वी विल डू योगा टू बूस्ट द पावर ऑफ अ ब्रेन हैव यू एवर वॉक्ड इनटू अ रूम ओनली टू फॉरगेट व्हाट ब्रॉट यू देयर और you run into someone you have known for many many years and his or her name slipped your mind or you engage in a frantic search for missing car keys glasses phone and other everyday items will you not alone our brain plays a phenomenal role in carrying out simple daily tasks and like our body it also needs nourishment like our body a brain changes as we get old and so does the mental function along with which increases our risk of developing diseases like dementia with impaired mental ability alzheimer's disease impaired memory and many neurological disorders scientists once thought that our brain stop developing after first few years of life but Fortunately a lot of research in the field of neuroscience has revealed that we can develop alternate neural pathways and create neurons which are brain cells even in adulthood the process is neurogenesis which helps to improve our mood memory and prevents diseases so let's learn tips to reduce risk of early memory loss first one is mental stimulation so as they say you use it or lose it so any activity which stimulates the mind or learning a new ability they help to create alternate pathways in the brain so try to do mental gymnastics crossword puzzles then even learning a new language or reading especially fiction then creating artwork or drawings anything where we use our hands for precise movements they are very good now if the activity is interactive fun and enjoyable it's even better so playing chess bridge or you can learn a musical instrument or hit the dance floor now unfortunately passive activities like watching television and afternoon nap do not help you now the second thing is physical activity so uh, fast walking or any aerobic activity like uh, riding a bike or swimming for at least 30 minutes a day they help to increase the flow of oxygen rich blood towards the brain and also eliminate toxins they help to improve overall health of our brain now coming to diet which also plays a very crucial role so eat diet mediterranean diet which emphasizes on eating fruits vegetables then whole grains nuts pulses and a lot of unsaturated oils olive oil and also protein derived from plants pulses and beans and other brain boosting foods include uh, foods rich in flavonoids like blueberries are there then there are walnuts avocado or um, uh, pumpkin seeds tomato broccoli even caffeine and green tea which is full of antioxidants so try to include them in your daily diet now another thing which is very interesting is fasting so we all know that fasting helps us to lose weight but research has revealed that fasting also helps to improve our health and also brain health so if you look at our prehistoric ancestors they used to hunt and gather food they ate they couldn't just open the fridge when they were hungry so when the body goes without food it sends signal to the brain and increases brain's natural growth 
factors which then supports the growth of neurons and can, uh, creates new neural pathways. Now, without going into details about how, how fasting helps, we look at the options. So, intermittent fasting, which has become very popular, can be practiced. So, there are options like you can fast for 16 hours. So, in case you have your last meal of the day at 8 p.m., then break your fast at 12 noon the next day. Or, there is a 5-2 model. So, you eat for... Five days and fast for two days, but they should be non-consecutive days. Now, coming to neurobics, that is aerobics for our brain. So, just simply switching hands to do simple tasks gives a workout to our brain. So, in case you are a right-handed person, use your left hand to do tasks like brushing your teeth or stirring sugar in your tea or coffee or even sending text messages as it develops alternate pathways in the brain. Now, another interesting thing is travel. Um, it promotes neurogenesis as it exposes our brain to new challenges. So take a weekend trip to a different city. Of course, we can't do it during COVID. So you can take an alternate route to your office, but don't use the GPS. Research done on London taxi drivers revealed that their brain has larger than average memory center and the hippocampus which is the area responsible for memory and spatial recognition in brain is measurably larger than that of a bus driver who follow the same route every day and London taxi drivers have to memorize the map of London. Now coming to yoga. Now yoga has unique inverted postures. They bring blood towards our head and brain and they help to relieve anxiety, depression, they boost our memory and improve our cognitive skills, that is mental skills. These are shoulder stand, head stand, standing forward bend. So we will be practicing them in our session soon and in case they seem too challenging, we can always do variations for them. Now, Deep breathing and pranayam, which is practiced in yoga, they help to break the cycle of anxious thoughts. As our mind is constantly racing and when the mind is anxious, it cannot take in any new information, let alone remember what's there. Then meditation, meditation helps to improve connection in brain. So uh, studies have revealed, including studies from Harvard, that practicing mindfulness meditation regularly, which focuses on the present moment, helps to increase brain connections. And uh, another thing that we can all do is maintain good social connections. So again, research has revealed that people who maintain strong social and emotional ties, they, it reduces their risk of cognitive impairment and also it improves their life expectancy. Now, other things that we can do for our brain is getting adequate sleep. So at least seven to eight hours as sleep rejuvenates our brain. Then um, limit the intake of alcohol and also avoid tobacco in all its forms. Now one more thing we can do for our brain is to protect our head. Any moderate to severe head injury in our early life can increase our risk of cognitive impairment later. So, whenever you're riding a bike, always wear a helmet or while driving, wear a seatbelt and avoid the use of mobile phone as it increases the risk of accident and of course head injury. Now, these are some everyday memory helpers. So, try to keep items at the same place each day. Then also what we can do is uh, repeat names of new acquaintances. Either you can do it silently or aloud. Say, for example, it's nice meeting you, John, or it's nice to be here, Rita. And um, also repeat important facts back to people as you talk to them and even to yourself. Like one way of remembering is if you come back from your office and you have a file that you've kept in your drawer, you can say it. Oh, I've kept my file in my bedside drawer. 
It's an auto reminder for our system. Then try to engage your senses. So place items to be remembered at attention grabbing spots like your medicines. You don't want to forget them. So these are visual reminders. Then one more thing we can do is avoid multitasking. When we do that, it increases forgetfulness and mindful meditation is a great, wonderful tool for that. And there are various articles about mindfulness which allows you to focus on the present moment. I have written a few articles which got published in a book released on International Yoga Day and they are available on my page. Then one more thing that we will do in our session is Ganesh Namaskar. So, um, as we know that um, exercise is very essential for our physical health and also the health of our mind. As a lot of people are extremely anxious because we are dealing with a distressing situation, coronavirus, and there is a lot of fear and anxiety about the disease and its outcomes. And having said that, a lot of people are wondering if going to a gym or swimming pool or even to a park for jogging or for a walk is a good option because these places can be crowded and with lots of surface area that can transmit infection. But now more than ever, exercise is important to give us protection against the virus. Yoga is a wonderful tool to deal with anxiety and isolation and it can be practiced anywhere and it doesn't require much in terms of equipment. WHO mentions yoga as a means to improve health in its global action plan and as coronavirus attacks our respiratory tract, so practicing breathing and pranayam will help to improve efficiency of our lungs and immunity by pumping oxygen-rich blood to all cells of the body. So after we have taken key precautionary measures for COVID prevention, let's take a deep breath and do the best to calm ourselves. And we begin our yoga practice. So we will close our hands and chant Om three times. So take a deep breath in for Om chanting. our mind to the divine kaina vacha man se indraya va bodhyatmana va prakrte swabhava karomi yad yad saklam parasmai narayana et samarpayami narayana et samarpayami in case anyone has a chronic medical condition, please check with your physician before starting a regular practice. But in general, if anyone has high blood pressure, heart disease and other chronic conditions, especially for, they should avoid doing inverted postures that bring the blood supply towards the head or best to check with your physician. And in case someone has back pain, avoid doing forward bends or we will use a support. So uh, we begin our practice. Come to a standing position on the mat and we can start marching. You can start moving your arms or you can do exhale. Exhale. Keep exhaling. Exhaling is very important as it helps to get rid of toxins and when we do deep exhalations, of course, we inhale automatically. If you are lucky enough and you live in an area where you can go for a walk, you can 
go for a walk before you start your yoga practice or we can do a little bit of warm up to send blood to all the cells and muscles of the body and let's do it with a smile a body doesn't know whether this is real laughter or fake laughter and as they say you fake it till you make it and smile boosts our immunity and relieves anxiety now we turn sideways exhale 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 just turn sideways now we stretch upwards as if someone is pulling you from above stretch all the nerves of your body and lengthening your spine bend forward and exhale exhale whenever we do forward bending we should always stretch backwards now sit on the mat you can either sit in a comfortable sukhasan position or sit in dandasan if you can't bend your knees let's do ankle rotations five rounds in clockwise and five rounds in anti clockwise direction now we will do neck rotation so drop the chin down and as you inhale your head towards your right shoulder now you start exhaling inhaling go up and exhale so let's do five rounds in clockwise and five in anti clockwise direction and keep going now these are wonderful to relieve any pain and stiffness in the upper back area neck area and shoulders as lot of people are working from home a lot of women are attending online classes with their children which can give us pain and stiffness in our upper back area now coming to shoulders so let's practice shoulder shrugs so inhaling shoulders towards the ears and exhale down inhale and exhale try to do it with breath and awareness we do five rounds in clockwise and five in anti clockwise direction now a lot of people carry so much tension in their shoulders so let's shrug off this tension and shoulders are wings of the heart so when they are unlocked there's a sense of freedom in our heart and body now we do two rounds of surya namaskar so come towards the top of the mat and let's do it with awareness and breath so inhale exhale palms together inhale stretch up and arch back exhale lengthening your spine bend from your hips place your hands on the floor even if you have to bend your knees slightly that's okay inhale right leg back make sure this is at 90 degrees we don't want to do this retain the breath other leg back body is in a straight line dandasan exhaling come down ashtang namaskar so eight points of the body are touching the floor to toes knees to hands chest and chin inhale cobra exhale parvatasan inhale right leg forward 90 degree exhale other leg forward inhale stretch up and arch back exhale arms by the side and relax let's do left side now inhale exhale palms together inhale and stretch up and then arch back if we go like this it affects our back so stretch up and arch back exhale lengthening your spine bend from your hips hands on the floor inhale lift leg back retaining the breath other leg back exhale dandavat pranam we go to god and our elders in this position inhale rise like a cobra exhale 
Inhale. Now, in case you can't bring your leg forward in one go, you can bring it here and then exhale. Inhale and relax. Now, round two. One more round. Inhale, exhale, palms together. Inhale, stretch up, arch back. Exhale, bending from your hips that protects the back. Inhale, right, reach in, stick pose, exhale, elbows stay close to the body, hips are raised, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale and relax and left side and last round. Inhale, exhale, palms together. Inhale, stretch up, arch back. Exhale. Inhale, lift, reaching. Exhale. Inhale, rise like a cobra. Exhale, Parvatasana. Inhale. And relax on the mat in Shavasana and practice deep breathing. Now, because we are doing a practice in the evening, so we will only do two rounds as Surya Namaskar activates our Surya Nadi. So if you're practicing in the morning, you can do six rounds, but we don't want to activate our Surya Nadi too much in the evening. So we relax in Shavasana on the mat and practice abdominal breathing. It helps to bring the heart rate to normal, prepares us for the next asana. So, let's see how we do it. As we inhale, the abdomen rises. When we exhale, using our diaphragm, engaging our diaphragm, abdomen goes in. It is great to boost efficiency of our lungs and boost our immunity. So, can count. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. That will help to block your thoughts. So, now we turn towards the right and come to a seated position for our asana practice. Now, we will do few inverted postures. Now, these inverted postures bring our blood supply towards the head and the brain and uh, they relieve anxiety and also boost our cognitive skills and also they boost our immunity as they enhance lymphatic drainage. Now lymph is a fluid which flows through the body, our lymphatic system and it removes dead viruses and bacteria. So when we do inverted postures, they help to boost lymphatic drainage. The first pose is downward facing dog or adhomukho shvasasana, tabletop position, inhale, as you exhale, raise your hips, drop the head between your arms. Now hold the position and breathe deeply in the pose. Um, if you visit John Hopkins site, how to deal with COVID anxiety, they say that if you have done your downward facing dog yoga pose today, you are probably already feeling more relaxed. So hold it, breathing deeply, hold it for at least 60 seconds. You can keep a pillow under your head to stay longer, to support your neck. And release the posture. Coming to the next pose, that is standing forward bend again. Um, anyone with back pain will do a variation, so please be careful. Now we start by inhaling and taking the arms above our head. Now stretch as if someone is pulling you from above. Now maintain that stretch and bend from your hips, lengthening your spine so the body is at 90 degree angle. And catch hold of your toes, ankles, knees, chins, wherever you can reach, it's fine. And try to bring your forehead towards your knees. Practice deep breathing, 
Stay here. Breathe deeply. Now, in case anyone has back pain, they can use a chair. And all they need to do is place their head on a chair. This helps us to stay longer in the pose and also it's uh, for backward uh, bending if someone has back pain. Now, whenever we do backward bending, we should always do a counter stretch to balance our spine position. So stretch backwards. Now, these poses, they improve. Also, they relieve anxiety and depression. And uh, whenever you hold a stretch, try to hold it for at least 60 seconds. In case you hold a stretch, you can hold it for 20 seconds. Do three repetitions or if you can hold it for 30 seconds, then at least repeat it. Now, the next pose is queen of all asanas and that is shoulder stand. So, please do it only if it is a part of your regular yoga practice as it's an inverted pose and anyone with blood pressure and we will be doing a variation. So, neck pain, shoulder pain, heart disease. We will do legs up the wall pose. So, let's start. You can straighten your leg by bringing the elbows closer. Stay here for 30 to 60 seconds. To release, lower your legs to 45 degrees and slowly roll out of the position one vertebra at a time, protecting your back. And for those who have high blood pressure, they can simply place their legs on a chair and relax here. Because our heart and our head are at the same level. Or if you have a wall, you can do, say this is an imaginary wall, you can do with breathe karni or legs up the wall pose. Again, a very relaxing pose. So either put them on a chair and relax. Now, let me share something about uh, these inverted postures with you. Um, when yoga was becoming popular in Europe in 60s, Queen of Belgium decided to learn an inverted pose headstand and she learned it from BKS Iyengarji and she managed to learn it and practice it. And guess what? She was in her 80s. So, of course, we need to be mindful and careful about our body's limitations, but let's not be afraid to try something new as these postures look a bit intimidating. And as a popular Bollywood actress, Shilpa Shetty, who has been practicing yoga, uh, she started learning advanced yoga poses after she turned 42 and after doing a pose, she said that age can wrinkle my skin and I'm okay with that. But to give up on my enthusiasm to learn something new is going to wrinkle my soul. I don't want to live with that. So again, you have to be careful about your body's limitations, but let's not underestimate our strengths. Now, whenever we do shoulder stand, we do a counter pose and that is fish. Matsyasan, hands go under the thighs. As you inhale, Head up, chest up, and exhale, drop the head back. Now, weight of our body is on our elbows. Head is only touching the ground. Our rib cage is expanded, so practice deep breathing. A great pose to improve our lung efficiency and boost our immunity as anti-aging benefits also. So does shoulder stand. Brings the blood supply towards the head, towards the face, towards the eyes. And release. You can shake out your wrist. 
Now this is Matsyasan. We should practice it after we do shoulder stand. Excuse me, my throat was getting very dry. So just having some honey just. Now we will do postures that bring up blood supply towards our neck area. Um, and they support our thymus gland. Now T cells develop in our thymus gland and these T cells are soldiers. They seek out and destroy disease causing pathogens, bacteria, viruses and they boost our immunity. So these two poses, the first one is um, Halasan. Again, anyone with blood pressure, heart disease, asthma, back pain, neck pain, be careful. Some people find that it makes them uncomfortable. In fact, any pose, if it makes you uncomfortable, don't do it. You can instead do downward facing dog yoga pose again. Or you can do a variation. So, this is flow or halasan. In case your toes don't touch the ground, you support your back with your hands. Stay here, breathing deeply. This pose also stimulates our thyroid and parathyroid glands, like shoulder stand. So it helps to improve metabolism in our body. Again, release slowly and carefully one vertebra at a time and for those who want to do a variation which is half flow place your legs on a chair and release very slowly, protecting your back. Now again we will do a counter pose that is Setu Bandhasan or bridge pose. So, inhale now. There is a straight line from our knees to our hips to our shoulders. This is Setu Bandhasan. You can stay here or you can hold your back. A great pose to help relieve back pain as a lot of people are experiencing back pain. They are working from home without proper equipment. It strengthens the back muscles in case you can't hold it for so long. You can do repetitions. So, like in the way, OM1, OM2, OM3, OM4, OM5, on one, on two, on three, on four, on five, and you can do 10 to 15 repetitions of this. Setu Bandhasan. And once we release, we'll do a Panasan. You can give a gentle massage to all your spinal nerves. And come to a seated position for head or knee pose or Paschimottanasan. Now, this Halasan. It boosts our immunity, but it also improves our cognitive power because it balances the output from various hormones. It uh, stimulates our parathyroid glands. Now coming to Paschimottanasan, inhale, anyone with back pain, be careful or we'll use a pillow. Inhale, take the arms above your head. Stretch as if someone is pulling you from above and as you exhale, bend from your hip. Catch hold of your ankles, chins, knees, wherever you can reach comfortably. Yatha Samar. Don't push yourself. As you practice every day, the spine becomes more and more elastic. But make sure you do it every day, even if you can reach here, that spine. Absolutely fine. Don't push yourself. So, um, in case someone has back pain, we can keep a pillow on the knees and... Try to stay here for 60 seconds. 
Now, this is a great pose. It gives a gentle massage to all our internal organs, pancreas, liver, kidney, spleen, great for people with diabetes. It stimulates the pancreas. And also, it's a very relaxing pose when someone is going through anxiety. It helps to calm the nervous system which goes into an overdrive. Now, we do a small variation of this pose by stretching our legs sideways. And this is a great pose, especially for women, as it helps to relieve menstrual and menopausal symptoms. Again, we do the same thing. Inhale, arms above the head, and exhale, in come down from the hips. It's okay if you can't reach. Again, we use a pillow and stay here. The idea is to stay in the pose, which helps to improve the flexibility of our spine. Now, this pose also is very good because as our legs are stretched, it strengthens the bladder muscles, which helps to prevent urinary incontinence, which again happens in old age, very common in old age. Now, again, whenever we do forward bending, we should always do backward bending. So we will do Bhujangasana or Cobra. The palms are under the shoulders, feet together. Inhale, raise your head up and chest up. And do it slowly as a cobra comes out of its hood. Visualize the smooth and graceful motion of a cobra. Now, make sure you don't hunch your shoulders because this contracts our chest. We want the chest to expand and elbows stay close to the body. Let's not do this. Again, this is a great pose to combat depression. Any backward bending chest opening pose helps to relieve depression by clearing any blockages in and around the heart and also great pose to relieve back pain. And uh, we can do a modification in case this is too intense, you can stay on your elbows, not your hands. So we do counter pose, which is child pose. Now, we'll do one more pose that is very good for balancing and focus and it's best to do it on the floor, not on the mat. Yeah, that is Briksh Asan 3 or Bhagira. So, palms together. You can just do this, that's fine. Or, stay here, focusing at a point in front of you. Let's do the other side. So, if this is okay, if you want, you can take support and great pose to improve balance, stability in the body, and focus and concentration. It's named also called Bhagirath Asan, named after a Rishi who stood on one leg. Uh, to appease Lord Shiva and to bring Ganges from the heaven to the earth and this that's what they say. Now we'll do one last pose before we start Pranayam and that is Topu Kana or Ganesh Namaskar. It will take you back to your school days. So it's a variation of chair pose. So bring your knees together, right hand, left hand and Squats. Inhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Try to keep your elbows above so that back stays straight, doesn't become rounded. Inhale. Exhale. Anyone, anyone remembering their school days? And let's do 100 of these. Okay, now we can do 50 repetitions of this. It is great because it balances both sides of our brain. Now, we have come to an end of, this is also called Ganesh Namaskar. 
And now we will do some pranayam. So we can relax for a few minutes in Shavasana. Legs apart, arms apart, palms facing upwards. Try to bring the heart rate to normal by practicing deep abdominal breathing. Now turning towards one side, come to a seated position on the mat. And let's do 50 pumpings of Kapalabhati. So those who know how to do it, start on their own, both hands in Chin Mudra. First exhalation, followed by passive inhalation. Make sure the back is straight, shoulders are relaxed. Now, keep going. Um, something important about Kapalabhati, in case anyone has uh, heart disease, high blood pressure, hernia, then eye problems like detached retina, glaucoma, ulcer, epilepsy, or even after surgery, it's best to either avoid Kapalabhati or check with your physician as it involves very post exhalations. And also, don't practice it too fast, which can lead to hyperventilation. And do 50 pumpings. Once you advance in your practice, you can do three sets of two, uh, 50 to 60. Now, this is a Shat Kriya, which should be followed by Pranayam. It's a cleansing technique. Now, we get ready for Pranayam, which is the first one is Alom Vilom. Chin Mudra. Now, this one is in Vishnu Mudra. We fold these two fingers. Close the right nostril with the right thumb. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Try to do at least nine rounds of this every day. Keep going. And try to take more time to exhale. So double in case you are inhaling to a count of three. Exhale to a count of six. Or in case you are inhaling to a count of four, exhale to a count of eight to get rid of toxins in, while exhaling. And as you advance in your practice, slowly start retaining the breath between inhale and exhale, but only once you are advanced yoga practitioner under the guidance of a teacher. Because technically speaking, pranayam consists of three steps. Inhale, <clears throat> which is purak. Retention, kumbhak, and ex exhalation, that is richer. According to Bhagavad Gita, verse 4.29. So, uh, but if retention makes you uncomfortable, don't do it. Or anyone with heart, lung problem, or pregnancy, don't retain the breath. Um, but when we retain the breath, it helps with gaseous exchange. We get a lot of oxygen reaching our cells. Now, Coming to the next pranayam, Bhamri pranayam, very helpful to relax our mind. So closing your ears, inhale and as you exhale, produce the humming bee sound. to improve our cognitive skills and also relaxes the brain as the sound helps to relax our mind. So try to do three to four rounds of this. Now we'll practice one more deep breathing technique which is becoming very popular on WhatsApp groups and that is square breathing or box breathing. So it's a Harvard technique. So let's see how we do it. Visualize your breath traveling along the square and as you inhale then reach in the breath or exhale, slowly count to three on each side. So inhale up, first side of the square, one, two, three. Reach in, one, two, three. Exhale down, this side of the square, one, two, three, and reach in. So let's practice it for a few minutes. Keep going at your own pace. Now, this is extremely helpful to relieve anxiety and also it improves the efficiency of our lungs. 
So try to include it in your daily practice and try to do it for at least 5 to 10 minutes every day. Now coming uh, to meditation. So um, we will practice a mind quietening technique again by Harvard Health which uh, incorporates transcendental and mindfulness meditation. So you can either sit on the mat or you can sit on a chair but make sure feet are on the ground and relax your body starting from your feet to your thighs to your body to your shoulders then neck and then take slow long deep inhalations and at each exhalation say the word peace and you can either say it out loud or silently and continue to do so for 10 minutes at least when stray thoughts interfere as they will so just greet them, acknowledge them, accept them. Don't judge them, just be a silent observer and let them go and return to your word. You can choose any other word, happiness, peace, I'm happy. And uh, when we chant out loud, it helps to drown our thoughts. And um, try to, after a few weeks of practicing this, you should feel calm and relaxed. Now, meditation doesn't block the, our thoughts or it, uh, we don't pretend that the thoughts are not there. It's just that when the thoughts come, as mind is constantly racing, when the thoughts come, greet them, acknowledge them, accept them and let them go. And you may experience emotions like um, fear, anger, even joy or tears during your meditation. That's okay. All these feelings have been waiting to get out. So um, again, uh, practice in mindfulness, which helps us to stay in the present moment. Try to include it in your daily practice. Now we will be coming to an end of a practice. Before we do so, we will bring our palms together and do some visualization or affirmations of gratitude. So you can either tell yourself or visualize I'm calm and happy. My lungs are perfectly healthy and they're pumping a healthy amount of oxygen with each breath. I thank my lungs for keeping me alive. My, I wake up with a clear mind and my memory is perfect. I feel happy. You can send any message to the universe. It's the law of attraction. So when we emit positive energy, we feel positive and it brings back positive things in our life. So we can send a message to the universe that, or you can visualize that coronavirus has disappeared from the face of this earth. And uh, practicing gratitude and affirmations also helps to improve our cognitive skills. And whenever you wash your hands, as we have to do many times, express gratitude for what's going well, like for a roof over your head or for a meal. Um, now we've actually come to an end of our practice, so we will do Mahamritanjan. Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukumiva Bandanai Mrityur Mukshir Mamratai Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukumiva Bandanai Mrityur Mukshir Mamratai Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Uravarukumiva Bandanai Mrityur We've done wonderful sadhana, so please, this is Anjali Mudra, feel gratitude for yourself and for the practice. May this practice bring us our highest good and our highest potential. May we refrain from negativity and choose responses which are uplifting for us and for the society. Now, I also want to express gratitude and thanks to Mr. Aghosh Singhal, 
for arranging this session at such a short notice and Mr. Amit Garg for providing backup support and big thanks to Roshnara management team for thinking about these out of box ideas. Um, I'm wishing you peace, light and energy. Thank you and Hari Om Tatsa.